The Volvo C40 Recharge Twin, the brother or sister to the CX40 that I reviewed earlier this year. In this review, I'm going to take you to some of my favourite places in Victoria, explore the interior, exterior, what's good, what's bad, because realistically, this is a great car, except for one issue. The Volvo C40 Recharge comes in eight different colour options, and this one is called Fjord Blue. Kind of reminds me of a Smarty, what do you reckon? Front and centre, there's a blanked out grille that tells you it's electric and they're flanked either side by the Thor pixel LED headlights. To me, the front's rather beefy and not so pleasant compared to its profile, which is where you can actually tell this apart from the CX, whereby at the rear C-pillar, the CX is more SUV-like, whereas this one is more sports coupe. The mirrors are automatic folding, auto dimming, that rear sloping hatchback it's got this massive LED brake light system that is animated and supposedly the largest that Volvo actually makes. Got badging to tell you that it's a Volvo, the recharge twin. And for myself, knowing that looks are subjective, I find this is where the car looks its best. To get into the boot, you've got an underlip button here, or you do the classic. I appreciate that this is a small to medium sized SUV. That boot's pretty small at only 413 liters put the seats down and that increases to 1205 litres. Up front there's a 31 litre front and it can tow up to 1500 kilograms on the single motor version or the twin up to 1800 kilograms, both of them braked. The boot has this trendy partition that I've seen in the Polestar where you can divide it effectively in two and got some hooks where you can hang some bags from. That also accesses under the boot space which is actually mm, maybe not that serviceable like you definitely could not fit a spare tyre into this space. With the Volvo C40 Recharge there's no walk away lock like you would see on a Tesla even though you've actually got a phone key on your app as well as a proximity key to access the car. So I do like this feature whereby you can not only close the boot from up here but you can also close it and it will lock the car as it goes. Locking or unlocking the Volvo C40 is either through a hand behind here and it will open the door or you can just press this little dimple here on any of the four doors and it will lock them. Underneath there's some puddle lights and I actually find there's a really nice way to get into and out of cars unlike the confusing door handles you might find on a Tesla Model Y say. The Volvo C40 Recharge can seat up to five people, however I would suggest the person in the middle here wouldn't be very comfortable, particularly on a long journey, due to this transmission tunnel as a legacy from the petrol versions. The outboard seats feature isofix and are also heated, which you can select through the controls here beneath your vents, along with two of the four USB sockets in the car. In the door, it barely fits this kind of small 600ml water bottle, it squashes in there, but fortunately, if you pull the centre armrest down, you can actually put a decent sized bottle in that space. You've got some cargo nets here to store bits and bobs, and you've got really good knee room. I'm 170 centimetres tall, and this seat position is where I have it. And right now, I've got heaps of space here, lots of foot room as well, and hair room is not bad either, considering it's somewhat potentially compromised by that sweeping sports back. All the electric windows have a full auto function, with the rear ones coming down to almost the very bottom. The cabin features LED interior lighting, ambient lighting, and this dark grey, charcoal and black combination that makes it feel very contemporary and sophisticated in that Swedish style. Before I jump in the front and start detailing that, let's talk about grades and options. The Volvo C40 comes in either a single or twin motor, as well as plus or ultimate packs. This version is the ultimate, but stepping down to the plus is still pretty good. Instead, you'll be getting LED headlights instead of pixel, a rear camera instead of the 360 degree camera suite, 19 inch wheels, mid-level interior illumination, whatever that means, different upholstery choice, eight speaker sound system with 250 watts, with pricing starting at $78,909 before on-road costs, all the way through to $87,990 again for on-road costs. So it's definitely getting right up there in price points. So you've got to ask yourself, would you rather go for a cheaper Tesla or this one? Let me know below. Just like in a Tesla, front and center, you've got this nine inch display that has Android Automotive. And I'll talk more about that very soon. For the driver, there's a 13 inch version. 
This C40 Recharge has a Harman Kardon sound system with 13 speakers, subwoofer and power output of 600 watts. It sounds pretty awesome and is right up there with good car audio. The center screen is where you're going to be doing almost all your configuring and your infotainment just like you do in Teslas. To date, it's had more than 10 over there updates and that is also included in your price. Being Android Automotive, there's a lot of things you can do in here and I've detailed that in the past with the Volvo CX40, so check out the links below if you want to delve into that. But some things that I have noticed here are still, it's not the full Android Auto experience, differentiating between Auto and Automotive. So it's kind of a bit frustrating that apps that I can normally use here, I cannot. If you have an Apple iPhone, however, you can actually plug in and use Apple CarPlay, which is arguably, for this car at least, the better experience. Nonetheless, the Android Automotive experience is pretty good and comprehensive. Screen input is fast enough, not too laggy. With the mobile phone app offering some functionality like the ability to lock, unlock, locate the car, preheat the climate and change charging levels and things like that but that's pretty much it it's a bit slower found and doesn't always work and uh, yeah I feel that there still needs to be a bit better of marriage between the two different systems because right now it's still definitely a work in progress flanking that screen you've got two of the four vents across the front here then some demisters hazard lights as well as your audio controls for forward back play, pause and volume. Here I feel that there's kind of a bit of a mixture that shouldn't actually be here. I like to see it on the bottom portion of the screen, your music, what is playing, album art, volume controls and things like that. And down here, use all this space for your HVAC controls and perhaps a shortcut button to access deeper controls in the HVAC settings. The Volvo C40 has a heat pump and I found its performance to be very good, particularly in this rather inclement weather we're having. It's generally really too cold right now or really too warm. So between the heated seats here, the cloth seats and that heat pump, I found the car to be very comfortable to be in. The glove box is a bit on the small side, featuring right now just this manual and a spot for a pen, plus this handy little hook that can carry up to two kilograms. You've got a wireless charge spot, the other USB sockets, a space for what I think is a cigarette tray, not very sure, it's probably a good hideaway, two good sized bottle holders, a rubbish box which is actually quite handy now that I know what it's designed for, so you can just pull this and take it out and put it back in nice and easily, plus also this armrest that has some space you can put stuff into. Getting into the Volvo C40 means the car is actually on and ready to go. It's actually faster than my Tesla Model Y. Like I could put this in drive and be going way quicker than I could in the Y say. This 12 inch display I find to be awesome. It's got everything you should need from speed, speed advisories, amount of power using, regen, range, battery charge, trip computer, efficiency, headlights, warnings and front and center here you've got maps which is brilliant because not only can you clearly see your speed in your field of view you can also see your map directions and where the next turn is going to be say so then this screen the nine inch version i don't use that so much for navigation sure i can set it through there and that's great and all but i might run audible or spotify there and keep that full screen my maps here and this is something that i'd like to see in a tesla model 3 or y in the near future if you set a destination that's beyond the range of this car, it will actually recommend to you where some charging stops are and you can actually uh, edit, change them or even delete them. So I've done an extended driving impression video where I go into that in a lot more detail and provide a greater insight into all this and a lot more. So if you want to check that out, follow this video and yeah, please check out the end card as well. Driving the Volvo C40 Recharge feels like a state car. Lovely, buttery smooth, and a great car to have you at traffic lights where you would surprise someone with how much power it has. Ride is firm, but not harsh like a Tesla Model Y, with those knocks and shutters suddenly coming through into the cabin. I wouldn't say it's a car for spirited driving through complex uh, curves. For that, you probably want the Polestar 2 Performance review right here. 
No, this car is like everyone's taste. It's your daily commuter, it's your school run car, doing some shopping or having a night out on the town. Driving modes are thankfully absent here, where there's no chill, sport, or any other gimmick you want to throw at it. Instead, you've only got one pedal driving option and steering firmness. That's it, nothing else. The Volvo C40 Recharge is my new benchmark for regen braking. It now means that your accelerator is actually your brake as well. You ease off it and the car slows just like I'm doing right now. If I get up a little bit of speed here and I'll take my foot off completely, it slows, in fact it stops this car very fast. I like regen, good regen. I love how quickly it brings this car to a stop. Sure, it's actually blending in there, brakes without you even touching the brake pedal, but just, yeah, I really do appreciate that sort of go and, yeah, like seriously, it's, it's, it's very nice. And if you don't like one pedal driving, I, I would say to you, get in this car and try it out because I think this will converse you. With one pedal mode turned off, the car will coast like it is right now, like I haven't got my foot in the accelerator and it will slightly bring the car to a stop Maybe, no, no it won't. So I'm gonna use the brake, which actually feels pretty nice. It's got a little bit of travel. Uh, it's uh, linear, which I really enjoy, smooth and predictable. Turning circle is a pretty average 11.4 meters, which I mean to say, like most other cars in this sort of size will do. So no complaints in that department. The single motor produces 175 kilowatts of power or 420 newton meters of torque. That car has a 66 kilowatt hour battery and weighs in at a hefty 2,460 kilograms, meaning it's got a claimed range of 476 kilometers. Now, I'll tell you why I'm stressing the word claimed in a moment. So let's detail this twin motor version. This has 300 kilowatts of power, 670 newton of torque, and zero to 100 time in 4.7 seconds, which I've actually done faster. So uh, yeah, check out the extended driving impression video for uh, sound uh, levels, as well as you know the performance of this car. Nonetheless, this one has got a 79 kilowatt hour battery pack and weighs a hefty 2,600 kilograms. The Volvo's going to tell you that on WLTP cycle that it could get 507 kilometers of range, but honestly, it's not going to happen. This car is extremely thirsty. In the two weeks I've had it, I did some range testing. Urban, that is driving to and from work, doing uh, drop-offs, pickups, school runs, you name it. And a little bit of freeway driving. I averaged 21.7 kilowatt hours per 100 k's. So definitely thirsty. Then in the extended range video, I did a 250 kilometer round trip, more than three hours driving, almost all of it on a freeway cycle. And weirdly, I averaged on that one under 20 kilowatt hours per 100 k's. So I found that with this version, the twin, you're only going to be getting anywhere between 370 and 400 kilometers of range from that massive battery pack. So it's pretty disappointing that this car is so thirsty, making it at least a quarter more expensive to run, say, with just electricity uh, compared to the Tesla Model Y. Safety systems of the Volvo C40 Recharge Twin include five-star ANCAP rating. And part of that package includes eight airbags, autonomous emergency braking, including city, junction assist, and automatic electronic brake reverse, blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, and traffic sign recognition, which isn't always accurate. The Volvo C40 has pilot assist, which is like the equivalent of Tesla Autopilot. And I've got to say, it's actually really damn close to performance levels as Tesla is. So when I've got a little bit of speed here, not that I actually need it to engage it, just it won't do roundabouts or you know stop at intersections, stuff like that. Uh, all I do is just press the center button in, I've engaged it, and so long as the road markings or even just the road in general is distinguishable to that camera, it will set it and it will turn the steering wheel very nicely through almost all corners, just like my Tesla would. 
it's got radar cruise control obviously and so if you don't like lane keep assist you can just press this right hand button and it'll change over to just you know keep a safe distance sort of driving but for me i absolutely love cars that do this because it just makes for worry free stress free really easy driving in long distances like this so do i prefer the volvo c40 recharge handling and uh, its ride comfort over my tesla model y absolutely my tesla model y suspension is pretty harsh knocks and shutters come through the noise levels aren't that good and uh, i just find that this car is again that stately experience something that you would um, look forward to driving every time and if you're doing a long drives this car is definitely i think the better choice to do it in the charging specs of the volvo c40 recharge pretty good on a single phase think of any wall outlet in australia is seven kilowatts if you've got three phase power that bumps to 11 kilowatts meaning you're going to get about at least 70 kilometers of additional range per hour so if you do a lot of kilometers every single day and you want to replenish that charge as quickly as possible you're going to be doing it through that conversely you could come here to like a rapid charger and get up to 150 kilowatts of ultra rapid charging that's going to give you from 10 to 80 percent in a claim 27 minutes so for day-to-day -day living i find the volvo c40 absolutely usable for recharging either at home or out and about and there we have it my review of the volvo c40 recharge twin overall i find its looks ride handling fit finish it's dark moody interior that's sophisticated and befitting of a luxury vehicle through the features like its frunk, reasonable boot, and more. If you're thinking about going electric and you're in this sort of price market, definitely give it a go. For less money, obviously, you could be having the Tesla Model Y, which arguably has the better infotainment system, but Android Automotive is pretty close. Just need some of those refinements like I spoke about. My only criticism of this car is its range. Because of that very heavy battery pack and the twin motors, it's, it should be way better. And running around about that 20, 21 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers means that you're realistically only gonna get between 370 and 400 kilometers of range from this pack. So if you're aware of that and you still would like to check this car out, great warranty, great specs, do so. If you want to see some extended driving impressions, please do check out the end cards. Think about subscribing, it really supports the channel behind the scenes content on Patreon, or if you give me a coffee tip, I really appreciate that too. Check the description below for all those details, and otherwise, see you soon.